Greetings fellow humans and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, a purely cosplay piece. Recently Bernadette Banner and Hazariel's Costumes released videos about making various costume pieces for Moraine from the Wheel of Time and right at the very end of their collaboration video on Bernadette Banner's channel they were talking about different variations on Moraine's leather bolero thing that could be made and the words it's like oh. motorcycle punk Moraine <laughs> were uttered and I immediately felt every single ounce of my tiny being just go, oh my god, yes! So I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna be using the pattern that Hazariel's costumes released and I will link to the video where they put that out down below as well as all of the other videos I'm talking about, but I'm excited. In terms of the materials I'm going to be using, exactly how I'm going to do all of this and exactly what I'm going to use, I do not know yet, but that has never stopped me before. Let's get going. The first step was to trace the main pattern piece so I could make some changes. So I have been trying to figure out the pattern, trying to figure out how to adjust it for my body. Parts of it currently work, but I need to extend this here a little so that it meets at the centre back, and I need to change the shape of the arm side because it doesn't really fit me. The thing is, I don't want to alter these two notch points because that is where this shoulder piece attaches. So I have taken some tracings of various arm size on things that fit me. I'm gonna do my best to follow this kind of line to give myself more space in the arm side without moving any of the notches. Ta-da, new line. Tea leaf. Yes? Why were you crying? Well, I was alone downstairs. You broke the law and abandoned me. Do you want attention? Yes. Ooh, scritch. You can come hang out with me in the sewing room, you know. You're allowed. Because you can't jump on my table. I know I am small. Do not highlight. Rude. Hmm? Oh, all right. I'm gonna come hang out instead of just sitting downstairs crying to figure out where me and the other cat are. Okay, I'll go back to pattern drafting now. After trying the first iteration of the body piece pattern for fit and noticing some issues, I traced and inked out some adjustments to the front neckline and the centre back areas, making sure to carefully transfer the alignment marks. Okay, so I tried the body pattern piece again and I added a little bit too much. There was some weird gaping around the top of the arm's eye that I'd gotten rid of by folding the paper while it was on my body. So to correct the pattern, I marked and cut the lines of that fold, taped the angles edge to edge, and cut away the excess paper. Then, because my new neckline was larger than the original pattern, I needed to adjust the collar piece. I cut the original piece down the center, penciled out the extra space I needed, making sure I added a new center back line taped the two halves of the collar where I needed them, marked the shape of the top and bottom edges, ripped away any superfluous paper, taped down the backs as well, just for security, and cut out my new collar shape. So I believe my pattern is now done. Am I going to do a mock-up? No, I'm not. Why? I have no legitimate reason beyond laziness. But I now have a quandary. I was originally planning on making this out of an old leather jacket a friend had given to me to that purpose. I spent a very large amount of time yesterday unpicking said jacket and now have bits of it scattered all over this table. It's not very thick or stiff leather, so I would need to back it with some kind of heavy cotton canvas and probably line it to get it all to work how it needs to work for this garment. Upon explaining what I was up to to Hamish, he reminded me that he has this entire leather skin hanging around, much thicker, much stiffer, would work really well for this as it is pre-textured, and he said he's entirely okay with me using part of it for this project. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, because on the one hand, the thinner leather is going to be a lot easier to sew through and will be a lot more malleable. So if the fit of the garment isn't exactly right because I haven't mocked it up, it will be less of a problem because it will form to me more easily. On the other hand, this skin is gonna work better for the overall look, and this has literally just been sat here not being used for years, so maybe it is time. It also saves me all the hassle of like adding seam allowance to the pattern pieces and turning edges under and stitching and like lining and yeah, yeah, 
we're using the chunky boy. That's what's going to happen. This is very good for gesturing. Because this skin had been tied up in a roll for literal years, after cutting its bonds and unfurling it, I laid out the section I was going to cut from on the table with a hefty collection of fashion and sewing books to help the leather flatten out a bit. I then started laying and tracing out each of my pattern pieces. This definitely wasn't the most precise way of doing things, but I knew I'd be able to wipe these marks off and it allowed me to get the pieces I needed out of the smallest possible amount of leather because I could see all the markings side by side. After that, I used Hamish's leather knife and a self-healing craft mat to cut the inside edges of the lines I had marked. This was also not the most precise, but between working on pretty thick leather and working with leather for the first time, I think I did all right. Okay, this is really high up. Try again. Yeah, it's not like it. We are returned. The order of today is punching stitch holes into our leather pieces. I'm quite nervous about this. It's going to be loud and probably hurt my hands, but we are going to try. Let's get hammering and punching. That sounds violent. No, oh well. So I did my best trying to use the beautiful leather stitch punches I bought, as well as a hammer, to make some holes for me to sew through. And after bashing the bejesus out of it, I had some very pretty dimples, but no holes. I don't know if it was that the leather was too thick or that there wasn't enough force behind it, but I genuinely could not get all the way through the leather with these. I then took to the internet and panic bought a new hole making device and I gave it a go the next day. The plier style punch was much more successful than its smash it with a hammer style counterpart and I was pleased with the results, but it was pretty hard going sometimes. So after much plier scrunching, I have quite a lot of the pieces with the fair stitch holes. I'm not finished, I still have to do both of the body pieces and the shoulder pad piece things. And my hands already hurt. They're so sore. Like I genuinely think there may end up being a bit of bruising because oh, some of that leather was difficult to get through. I need to take a break from making stitch holes because ow. So instead I'm going to attempt to do a bit of piece connecting via some hand sewing. And so it was on to sewing. I initially tried out a cross stitch, but because of how widely spaced the stitch holes were on the pieces I was connecting, the cross stitch really didn't work. So instead I opted for this sort of herringbone stitch situation, going down through the top of one of the leather pieces, bringing my waxed linen thread up between the two pieces I was attaching, then stitching down again through the second leather piece and repeating. It worked really effectively, essentially creating a hinge where the thread sat between the two pieces and allowing for a wonderful amount of flexibility and movement. Then I needed to tackle the final set of stitch holes. When I was redrafting the pattern for the body pieces, I didn't correctly mark the lines that the cord on Moraine's bolero were meant to follow, but that's okay because I discovered I had this narrow tape that was the perfect width for me to make a stitch hole guideline. I just followed the edge of the body piece with tape, used my excellent little stitch punch pliers to punch those stitches, followed the inside edge of the first line of tape, laying down a second guideline, then punched all of those stitch holes too. And I felt very clever indeed, until I discovered that the tape I used was an absolute nightmare to peel off because it ripped constantly and also because it left behind a really horrible sticky residue on the leather. Although thankfully, I was able to wipe that residue off with a wet soapy cloth. Sorry for sound changes, my old mic pack has died. So I've been trying to figure out how to explain where I am and where I've gotten to, and I'm still not sure that I know how to explain that, but I'll give it a go. All of my pieces have their stitch holes. Very exciting. I have my shoulder pieces in existence. I have made various holes in various pieces using my leather punch, because I plan to put various heights of jazzy snazzy studs into this. I've also put larger holes into my shoulder pad pieces, because I am not going to attach these with any kind of stitching or contact cement. Instead, Instead, I'm going to use screw-in rivets. I've done some tests of stitching on black chain to be embellishment, but all of these embellishments pose various issues. For example, once this shoulder piece and this body piece are attached, I won't easily be able to get in 
around any of the areas that this is attached to add the rivet holes. It will also be very difficult, once these two pieces are attached, for me to get into the corner of this little thing to sew in the four lines of chain that I need on this piece. So I definitely need to add the chain to this before I attach it to this. However, the chain goes over top of stitching lines and because of how close some of the chain is going to be to the edge of this and the need for me to use some of those stitch holes to attach this piece to this, I think I need to add my chain to this but leave the very ends of the chain unattached so I can go back in after these two pieces are attached to fix down those little dangling end pieces. I also have the challenge that for me to figure out exactly where I need to make holes for rivets in this to attach the shoulder pad pieces onto it, I need to know exactly where that shoulder pad is going to lie on this when it is on my body. For this to lie on my body, how it will when it's a completed garment, I need this neck part to lie on me how it will when it's completed. But if I attach the entire collar, which will allow this and the second body piece to lie on my body correctly to figure out the location of the rivet holes, I won't be able to get in to use the leather punch that I have to make those rivet holes. <sighs> so I think I might need to kind of do the equivalent of tacking the collar in place on my two body pieces to get it to lie how it will to figure out the rivet locations. I also can't add any more chain to the bottom part of the collar until it's fully attached to this because I use the same holes that the structural stitching goes through to attach the chain. Why do more work than you need to? And the same is true on the shoulders of this. So I can't add any chain to the body piece until all of the structural seams are done. So <laughs> in terms of what needs to happen next, I'm not entirely sure and I'm a bit freaked out. I'm doing my best to figure it out but it's not easy. I think because I want to add like a buttload of studs onto the shoulder pieces just to make it extra funky, I might just do the easy thing and instead of dealing with any of the structural stuff, figure out the placement of the studs on this and punch some holes for them. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. It's less scary. I went to work with my ruler making some subtle pencil marks in a diagonal grid on each of the shoulder pads. Then I used my big boy leather punch to make holes for the screw-in studs any place the lines of the grid intersected. And there were a lot of them. Then I turned my attention to attaching the chain. On the two cap sleeves, I followed my plan of leaving the last few chain links dangling free so that the holes that were needed for structural stitching were available. But I just used some standard polyester thread to secure the chain links to the leather and then moved on to sewing the side seams of the body before tackling the shoulder pad placement. I had taken the time to put the paper pattern onto my body so I could trace and cut out the location that looked best for the shoulder pads. That meant I could clip the paper pattern to the leather and have a perfect outline of where I needed the shoulder pad to sit. If I had tried to punch rivet holes through the shoulder pad into the body pieces when it was lying flat, then when the body side seams were finished and it was curved against my body, it wouldn't have taken the correct shape. So to make sure it did have the right shape, I clipped my shoulder pads onto the body as well. Punched holes in a few strategic locations, put a rivet through the two layers of leather to keep them properly aligned. Then it was just a matter of rinsing and repeating, making sure the body piece was curved in the way it would sit on my body to get the right rivet position. And tea leaf kept me company through all of this. You are filming me again, aren't you? With my rivet holes all created, it was time to tackle connecting each of the shoulder caps to their corresponding body piece, followed by lining up the body pieces with the center point of the collar and attaching the collar as well. And then, while taking a quiet moment to reflect, a creeping suspicion began to dawn on me. Okay, so I was continuing on with my construction. I have a body piece. I've added one line of chain to each of my shoulder pieces. I was starting to get ready to add chain to the body pieces. And I started getting a little bit nervous because the amount of black chain I had left didn't look very hefty. Definitely didn't look like there'd be quite enough of it. I have a confession 
I didn't measure the amount of black chain I had or how much I would need of it before I started attaching it to this project. Ta-da! So because I was starting to get a bit nervous, I decided to actually do some measuring and I sussed out that to do the entire rest of the bits I want to do in black chain in black chain, I need 6.3 meters of chain. I have four meters of chain. So clearly I don't have enough. I also, seemingly, cannot find anywhere in my purchase history online where I bought this black chain. So I'm not confident that I can acquire more of it that will correctly match the chain I already have on this. I then got to thinking, what I'd thought about using before I decided on the black chain was this thick black cord. So I thought, what if we just use a bit of it here and there? What if it goes on the inner layer of the shoulder pads and the body pieces? How about that? How much would I need of everything then? If I did that, I would need three meters of black chain, which I have, and 3.4 meters of my black cord. I have exactly 3.4 meters of this cord, so I would be cutting it pretty damn close. So I've not decided what I'm gonna do. Try to roughly get it to work, because I like the way the cord looks, but I've, I've not quite figured out how to make that all work yet. But I definitely know that I do not trust that I can find a new black chain to purchase that will match the old black chain. So we're not gonna go with that, that's for sure. I also realized that at no point did I count the number of studs I have and check that I have enough of those to do what I want. So before I dive headfirst into studage, I'm going to count them and count the number of holes I've made for studs and purchase some extras if need be. I'm learning my lessons, sort of, and actually checking if I have the materials required before I just barrel in. Let this be a lesson to you kids. Measure first, always. Measure first. Check you have your materials first. I never do and it always gets me into trouble. Don't do as I do. Do as I wish I had done a week ago before I started attaching chain to leather. Learn from my mistakes. Why am I like this? I mean, I know why, but why? I took some time to very carefully count my lovely screw-in studs, as well as each of the holes intended to house a stud, and, well. After counting and doing the maths, I've worked out I need approximately four times the number of short stubby studs I have, and about double the number of the rest of them. Guess I'm ordering some more studs. <laughs> I decided I wanted two lines of chain on the shoulder pads, so stitched all of that chain down while Tea Leaf provided some much needed moral support. Then moved on to my first line of chain on the body pieces, having taken time to note where the shoulder pads would sit, so I didn't use any materials or waste time sewing where I didn't need to. I then added a line of black cord inward of that. Stud application was the next stage. It was a very straightforward one, as I just needed to pop a screw through the back of the leather, twist a stud onto it, and tighten them all afterwards. But it ended up being pretty time consuming because there were a lot of studs. Like really, a lot of studs. I mean, seriously, like a lot, a lot of studs. 267, to be precise. They do look very cool though. Okay. So I have reached a figuring point and need to make some kind of decision. The edge of this leather is white. Hamish suggested that I maybe use boot polish to change the color of it, but I'm concerned about that transferring onto my skin and my clothes. So I'm going to try using a Sharpie on the edge of a scrap piece of leather just to test if that blacks it out effectively, if it transfers, and if that works, I'll probably just go with that. But after that's done, literally all I have to do is rivet on the two shoulder pad pieces and she's done. So I went on a little Sharpie spree, 
before pushing all my rivet tops through the matching holes of the shoulder pads and body pieces and screwing in all of their backs. Which meant my biker punk moraine was finished. But before I filmed reveal footage, there was a person or two I needed to share this with. And I was ecstatic to catch both Ariel and Bernadette to show it to them. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? So would would you like to see the thing? Yes. Sure. Oh okay. my god, I'm so excited for this. Wait, tell me when to look. Okay. You can open eyes and look. <gasps> oh, look at her. That's fantastic. Ah, oh, that is so cool. That's really impressive. That's so cool. Wow. Oh my god, that is everything that I hoped and dreamed. <laughs> I really like it. That is so great. Thank you for um, showing it to me. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> it's finished and I am so happy with how it turned out and I'm also absolutely thrilled that I managed to show it to Bernadette and to Ariel because the conversation between them is what inspired me to do it, it's what gave me the idea. So it was really lovely to get to connect with them and share the fruits of their weird ideas with them. I think it's kind of funny in a way that I made this because I've been joking for ages with my partner Hamish that I'm never gonna be like a proper, proper historically clothing type maker because I just don't have the patience to completely hand sew something and yet I made this, which is completely hand-sewn. Apparently it's not that I can't do it, it's just that I need the correct motivation, and for me the correct motivation is apparently leather and studs. So <laughs> there you go. When I was on the video call with Bernadette she made a point, which is something I had been thinking about as well. Yes, it's a costume piece from a fantasy show, but it is so oddly wearable. <laughs> like I could wear it in my actual day-to-day -day life and it wouldn't look completely out of place, so that's cool. Having never worked with leather before and having never undertaken a completely hand-sewn project before, I am so happy with how this turned out. It's so beautiful. I have definitely learned lessons that I will probably immediately forget about the importance of measuring and counting the materials that I have before I start making it to ensure I have enough for the thing I'm making, but it worked out pretty well in the end. I really like the kind of textural difference that the combination of the chain and the cord on the body pieces gives this. It just makes my like teenage punk heart sing. It just makes me happy. I don't think I'm gonna tackle any more Moraine cosplay pieces, but I have thoroughly enjoyed making this leather bolero piece. And like I said, I will link down to all of the videos that brought this about and to Ariel's pattern in the description. One thing I will say about it being a completely hand-sewn piece is it did take quite a long time, especially adding the chain. Sewing on the chain took ages. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this little adventure into leatherwork and cosplay. If you liked this video, then liking it, sharing it around, commenting down below, all those things are very much appreciated. They're very lovely. They really help me out. If you wanted to keep hanging out, that would be super cool. But whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope everything is okay in your world. And I will see you guys for the next sewing related shenanigan. See you later. So long. Oh, bye bye. What do I say? Oh no, no, don't want that chaos. I'm so thrilled that someone did it. You know how you throw out ideas that are like, oh, I would love to see this, but like, I am not personally about to put the hours into making this, but I also really want to see it done. Yeah, it's like, I would love for this to exist, not through my labor, <laughs> right? but I hope it happens somewhere.